What is going on everybody? Hey, Eric, come to you guys again with another video. This is gonna be video number three, detailing my stay in inpatient treatment when I went away uh, for my anorexia. So let's get right to it. So to cut right to the point, uh, last video I talked about the relationship I had um, with another girl in the, in the facility and uh, how that developed into something a little bit more than I anticipated. So long story short, for those of you who haven't seen the video, I'll actually put the description down below and you can go check it out. Um, long story short, guy meets girl, girl meets guy. The girl tells guy that she um, has feelings for him, is attracted to him, and guy feels the same. Girl tells guy that she uh, thinks that he resembles her ex-boyfriend and guy gets attracted, gets attached, and finds out she has a boyfriend. So going on from there, uh, it was pretty hard after that to to have to see this guy come into uh, the family week at the the treatment center and have to play, you know, stupid if you want to say, or just act like you didn't know who he was. And uh, yeah, I mean, I had to really just think about it. And you know, now, I mean, I I, I didn't even know if I wanted to mention it to everybody. I didn't know if I wanted to say anything, uh, but I do feel like it now, and I made the decision to, to mention it to everybody on YouTube and when telling my stories because it had such a huge impact on my recovery, my stay in the center, and just who I was. It, it brought me a lot of um, good feelings, but at the same time, it brought me more bad feelings. It brought me so much depression. It brought me so much sadness and so much regret, and uh, I it really plays a huge role um, played a huge role in the months uh, following my, my release from the center. And, um, but anyways, I mean, I, I, the last thing I want to say about it before, I'll mention it in a, in a future video, but uh, is that it allowed me this fantasy in my head that I was not able to, um, I, wasn't, I didn't need to focus on the fears, the everyday fears that you have when you go into a treatment center like that, of gaining weight, of all of this, this stuff going on. Um, I could focus on a relationship, I could focus on uh, another human being, a girl that actually has feelings for me, that thinks I'm attractive. Like, I was stoked on that. I was, I was excited. And, you know, I didn't have to wake up every day and worry about what breakfast was, if, um, you know, how much fat I was gaining, and all that stuff just went out the window. So, um, but getting back to the main point of all this, and um, that was around, I would say, I found that out probably about two, three weeks in. And um, I also kept a journal every day and I wrote in this. Um, and I found this and it really has a lot of eye-opening things, but a lot of scary things as well. And I noticed, um, you know, really just crazy just to read all this stuff. But anyways, uh, I mean, I would write the meals that I had each day just to like reinforce to myself that okay yesterday I ate this much and that was a lot of food so I should be fine today with how much I ate today and it was you know just crazy to see all this stuff um I was trying to see what I could show you guys uh because this is like you know granted and I was actually going to go into more depth about the meal plan that I was actually on just for you know people like I would write this which is the challenge of the day you guys can read that hopefully you can read that um but yeah i mean just writing little stuff like that to reinforce to myself that i was going to be okay which is uh you know because all this stuff to everybody that's watching this uh that does not have an eating disorder it's like it's not rational to think that way it's not but as an anorexic and anybody, you know, like I said, anorexic binge, binge eaters, um, anyone with an eating disorder is just not real. Like it does not work. Like the human human brain is just, it's not wired correctly when you're in that state. So I say all these things and I just want everybody to know that it's just, you know, it's not gonna, it's gonna be pretty weird. So anyways, uh, so about, you know, two, two, three weeks into it, uh, everyone at the facility begins to catch on, and um, I can remember um, she got released actually um, before me, and I got the news and everything like that. And uh, she was, we would write letters to each other and leave them at, at, at and leave them at 
you know, our doors and everything like that. And, uh, you know, I can, you know, I this is the ma amount of sadness that she was going to have to be. She was getting discharged. It's like this huge happy feeling. Like, you're finally free of this place that's forcing you to stay here so you can shove food down your mouth and gain weight. Like, you should be super happy. But uh, I was like, I was upset that she was leaving. And outside of the facility that we were in, there's a, there's a step down facility. After you get released from an inpatient hospitalization program, you go towards a, a lower, um, lower form of care. And um, you know they get you to uh, go out to restaurants and do all that type of stuff and really challenge yourself. And so she was gonna go to the one that was right outside of um, the area and it was probably about 10 miles away and um, so she got released there and so I was I was like really gunning for it. I was like when I get out I'm gonna make sure I go there because there was basically that place and then you can go to another place that was back actually in California where I'm from and so I'm like ah, I won't go there so uh, but anyway she got released and uh, her and I like cried about it it was just not a it was not a good time and all the while like I was I was sending letters back home to mainly my sisters and everything like that and talking to my, my dad. Everybody was really supporting me, but I, was, I wasn't really telling anybody what was going on. And um, I, in this facility, I had like, I had the biggest meal plan out of everybody, obviously. But um, out of all the meals that have been there, I think I was like the second, the one with like the second largest meal plan. And um, I can just remember like the physical feelings like after a meal, like I was just like, is that it? Like honestly, it's like they're telling me like that all this food is supposed to be like, you know, giving me all this energy. I still wasn't feeling a lot of energy at this point. It's like three weeks in and finally I was just so, I was so like, I was so frustrated. I went to my dietitian. I had a dietitian, a psychologist, a therapist, an actual doctor to give me medication. I had all these, this team of doctors and I go, guys, like, why is this happening? Like, I want you to like, they, they, I can remember a little side tangent, like actually sitting in the actual um, room where we ate and they would come in and tell the girls that they would have to eat more. they they would get an extra serving size. They would get such and such and such. And people would break down, they'd cry. They would just, cr which is completely like for me, that's understandable. But when I get told that, I'm like, can I get another? carb or another protein or um you know so i finally came to them and i go god like what's can i you know you're telling me like i need more food then give me more food so it was more of like it was definitely very interesting to them and to me at least and um the the actual food groups and you know when we would talk about food there was obviously off topic um or off limits i should say words and everything like that you couldn't use I mean you couldn't say fat obviously you can't uh, you can't talk about calories exercising and um, obviously that's 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 totally the way it should be and um, you know you would have to refer to the food groups as um, protein and um, starch and fruit just not like I was actually surprised you could use protein um, but yeah, it was just, it was pretty nuts. And finally, I mean, I, I got to where they felt I was comfortable at. My weight, they always told me my weight when they, I'd wake up and get weighed every morning. And um, you have to weigh it in a gown. And they always told me my, my weight was always just like slowly, like very slowly, like coming up and everybody else was kind of like doing this. And my, mine was just very, very slow. I was on a T3 Medicaid. I was on T3. It was just like it, I had to take one for my thyroid, and it's just still, it's like, still baffles me to this day. It's like, just I would have taken more food, you know, or just cut the medication because I really just didn't need it. Um, so that happened, and I was nearing my the end of my stay there, and I can remember. Uh, I wrote here in my journal. Um. I'll never forget like the last night that I was there and um, I'm not gonna mention her name or anything like that obviously just for reasons um, uh, well it's 7 30 a.m. and I've made it not completely but I'm finally out of the inpatient center and I'm moving on it's such a it's such a mindfuck right now getting out of here and going into the real world 
I've already spent $80 at the airport. <laughs> Holy fuck. I just wanted to try everything and see. It's so weird and strange finally getting out of that place and into reality again. I can only hope that the rest of the day goes just as smoothly. I fucking hate flying and I'm scared of what's to come, but I know that God will protect me in my journey just like he did at that place. Um, the night before though was really, it was really hard for me. Um, just because I realized though how much this other person was essentially just kind of playing games with me. And um, everyone else, everyone else was trying to tell me for like the longest time, but I never wanted to accept it, or never wanted to accept it. And um, I finally was just like, I have all this stuff here, just about how I, um, I hated her. And I never ever used that word ever, but I had to like realize that like I, this other person like literally just just completely took my heart out of my chest and threw her on the ground and spit on it. You know, and, and it's... I wrote all this in here, I don't know if you guys... So, well, I don't want to make myself sound like a psychopath here, but like, I, yeah, I, this person like truly for even the months coming out of that, for the years coming out of that, I could not get this person out of my head. And, you know, and when you're in that type of mindset, in that state, and you can't really go to anybody else, that's what happens is, I'll say it, you fall in love. And um, so that's, that's what happened with that. I was re released on, uh, I think it was the end of February of uh, 2013 and was released into a step down facility which was located in Santa Monica, California. And I moved into a halfway house with um, with three other guys and they were all, you know, from different areas of, of the country and everything like that. And uh, got off the plane and was so scared about what was about to happen. Like I did not know. I was like thankful to be out, but I actually had to manage this on my own. I actually had to, um, I actually had to like literally, like I didn't have food given to me, nothing. I had to go do it myself. And this area, I went from like a super like high up, like nice, almost like a resort type of care to living in this, you know, small apartment just crammed with stuff in the middle of Santa Monica, California. So the first night I get out of the van and they go, okay, let's go do your food shopping. I'm like, sick. We have like a um, supervisor, if you want to say, or I don't even know. Um, just a person that watches over the halfway house and bring, brings me to the grocery store. Picture this little, you know, guy, 100 and, 100 and whatever pounds, just like, you know, cringing at the thought of like, wow, I have to buy my own groceries now. Gives me my, um, gives me my notebook or whatever, and just goes, hey, go get your food. See ya. Walks back out in the car. Granted, this person, I mean, she was she was nice, but I was just like, literally, are you serious? So here I am, sugar-free syrup, maple syrup. Which one do I choose? Uh, this is horrible.